Welcome to A Game of Ice and Fire, a video series devoted to A Song of Ice and Fire War Game by Cool Me or Not. We cover all aspects of the hobby with tactics and list build videos, painting tutorials of varying levels, and battle reports. In this tactics video, we're going to try and go over how to be more of a Lord of Bones and less of a rattle shirt. <laughs> As always, I like to start out with the tactics cards that the commanders bring in order to identify what kind of synergies I'm looking for in my army list in order to take the most advantage of the commander that I can. And with Rattleshirt, uh, that's almost more important than any other free folk commander because it's really where he gets most of his identity as a commander. Rattleshirt's cards are much like the vows for Night's Watch. When a certain trigger is met, you can play the card and then attach it to the unit, and then they've got that ability for the whole game. The trigger for all of these is the same. It's after a friendly combat unit completes a melee attack. If they destroyed a, an enemy rank, you can then attach this card to them, and then they'll get the ability. So that doesn't mean specifically having to take them from 4 to 0, although that will trigger the card. They could have two models left in that rank, or one model left in that rank, and if you wipe out that one or two models, uh, then you'll be able to attach this card. So it doesn't matter how many models you kill, just that you got a rank to go away. The first one we'll take a look at is Jagged Trophies. This one uh, says that each time, an, or each time the unit is attacked uh, with melee for each defense save roll of six, they suffer one wound. So this gives us a little bit of defensive output that's more offensive right because we're not making it so that we save better or anything like that we're just making it so that when we roll sixes on defense we get to reflect a wound back and every little bit that we can get as a free folk player to uh, put damage out on our enemy is valuable to us because a lot of our activations aren't very uh, concentrated in offensive power so with Jagged Trophies, I probably want to put this more on a unit that's going to get into the mix of things and not really put that on my flanking units like Cave Dwellers, even though they have the 6 plus save and it feels good, I guess. But mostly I want these on my units getting in the mix of things. The next card we get is Gruesome Reminders. And the ability you get from this one is, while engaged with this unit, enemies suffer neg 1 to panic test rolls for each destroyed rank in that enemy unit. So we're already trying to wipe ranks out, and that's, you know, that's what we're trying to do anyways, is just do damage. But there's enough cards in the Free Folk deck. Well, I mean, there's only one, but we have some synergies already within the faction that can make some use out of this card. And if we're just attacking anyways, uh, having an enemy take a neg 1 panic test or neg 2 based on how many ranks they have left can be beneficial. I don't think we're going to lean into that during the build, but we're definitely going to recognize it and try and utilize it where we can. The Mark of Slaughter is the last card that he brings along, and I feel like this one is probably the more uh, aggressive and the one that I want the most right away. Uh, when they get this to trigger, they get... Uh, plus two dice to their melee attack rolls, and then after their attack's been completed, they get to restore one wound. One wound doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're taking the combat zone, uh, it, can be, uh, it can be impactful, especially with some of the units we're taking that have a little bit more uh, sharp decay on their attack stat. But Mark of Slaughter is probably one of the cards that you would like to see first to try and start kicking more of those out and getting... Uh, getting more damage on units. When you look at the cards for Rattle Shirt, I can definitely see the, the benefit to stacking these up, especially if a, a unit's really carving through a lot of uh, your opponent's models. Plus, it makes it so that they have to kind of focus on that unit instead of spreading out all of you. Like, if you spread out all of your effects and put them on units that will utilize them, you get a lot of benefit that way, but you also, if you have one unit that's really like kind of getting this Death Star treatment, that can be threatening and cause your opponent to move in certain ways, and if we're causing, if we're controlling our opponent's moves or dictating their moves, that's a good place for free folk to be. So you just have to kind of pay attention to what your opponent's doing and how they're reacting to you on the table, 
and just try and attach these based on that activity. The one thing to keep really clear on these is that the ability stacking in the rule book stops you from getting any benefit for putting two of these on a unit. So if you put two Mark of Slaughter on a unit, they won't get plus four attack dice and they won't restore two wounds when they heal because the card specifically calls this out as an ability. So even though it's not an ability like Sundering or um, uh, Embolden or something like that, like it's not a keyed ability, it still s defines, the card defines this as an ability so they won't stack because they have the same name even though it's a really long name. The reason why I stated earlier that most of Rattleshirt's identity as a commander is wrapped up into these cards is because his attachment for, he's an on-the-field commander, and his attachment doesn't actually really do anything fancy for his unit. He doesn't have abilities like Harma or Torment. Uh, instead, he has the order called First Claim. After a friendly combat unit completes a melee attack, if they destroyed an enemy rank, which is the same trigger as the cards that he has, uh, Rattleshirt's unit, or if Rattleshirt's unit is within short range of the enemy, you can search your tactics deck or discard pile for one of his tactics cards and attach it to his unit, um, and then shuffle your tactics deck if you happen to search through it. So, Rattleshirt's a bit greedy in that if somebody were to get one of these abilities to go off, or get that trigger to go off, and you don't have one of these cards in your hand, you can go fetch one out and get it on Rattleshirt's unit right away. So even though he doesn't have any of those innate abilities that we look for in a lot of the commanders, uh, he kind of does in that he can just, not at will, but on demand kind of get his cards when the triggers hit if you don't have them in your hand. It's an interesting mechanic for him in that he doesn't really have any of these other abilities and you or any other abilities and you kind of do want to you can find yourself in situations where you want to find these cards on other units but that means we're just going to be putting Rattleshirt in a pretty good unit in order to get him the most that he can get out of the attachments so what unit do we put him in there's a few options now uh Rattleshirt is a commander much like Eddard is and much like uh Joffrey is where they could they bring their own unit that is specially for them. Now Rattleshirt brings the Bone Lords Chosen, and they come in pretty pricey for a free folk unit at eight points. That's one point more than Giants, and those are already hard to take based on what they do. So the Bone Lords Chosen have got to do a lot in order to make them worth that. But they 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 have their 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 upsides. They've got Horrific Visage, which is on the normal. Uh, followers of bone so they don't lose that ability but they get prey on fear baked into them uh, which is uh, each time the enemy each time an enemy engaged with this unit fails a panic test they restore two wounds so if you think of mark of slaughter uh, one attack can make it so that you restore three wounds so it kind of keeps you pretty pretty healthy but that kind of makes the eight point the eight the eight point price tag on these a little bit more easy to swallow because they have their attachment baked into them instead of just losing the ability outright. They have a decent attack stat line as opposed to the followers where it's uh, still hits on threes but they have an 864 attack stat line which is one higher on everything but the eight f than uh, followers but the real big bonus for them is that they have a four plus save and a six plus morale so they're pretty tanky and they're less susceptible to getting panic bombed so with Rattleshirt, it's hard to take that eight points and put it in one unit, but they should be able to get their value back considering we've got Mark all these uh, uh, trophy or all these attachments that we can go get with Rattleshirt whenever anyone decide whenever anyone gets one of these ranks down. Oftentimes, we're going to be doing it most with Rattleshirt, but other units still have the capacity to do it as well. Again, I think one of the best cards to go for right away with this unit is Mark of Slaughter. And even if you have one in your hand, I think it's better to go find the one out of your deck so you don't hit it later. And you can save Mark of Slaughter or any of the trophies, or any of the attachments for that matter, and uh, put them on other units from your hand instead of having to use his first claim ability. So we're already kind of getting that 
Rattleshirt kind of wants to clump up around his army so that he can get more chances to try and get this ability to go off. So let's look at trying to build the rest of the army out. Rattleshirt is wanting units that can do a lot of attacks up front so that we can get more chances to take out these ranks or have the ability to try and get them. So the Followers of Bone seem really good for doing something like that because they have that 8 attack stat and they hit on 3s, so it's not unlikely for them to get 8 to 7 hits when they charge without any real issues. Again, the as I had said with the benefit of the Lord of Bones, they aren't as survivable as you would hope they would be. They have a 7 plus morale, which is only one better than Raiders, but they're still holding on to that 5 plus save, and as we saw from the video earlier, it looks like Bones don't protect you very much from anything in this universe, so it's to be expected, I guess. But for attachments on this unit, in order to mitigate the low morale for them and how much it, they get punished for losing that first rank, we're going to attach the Weeper to this unit, and he gives them two abilities that they really benefit from. First is at any cost, so we can only we can kill one model instead of losing a bunch to panic checks, because I promise you with the attack stat of eight and things kicking around in our deck like uh, Group Assault, people are not going to want this unit to have full ranks. So having the ability to kind of mitigate the easy panic check rolls is going to be helpful for them. Plus, uh, the Horrific Reputation Order can help with Horrific Visage to get some extra wounds out that way. And if we're causing any panic checks through other means, having the panic token on demand is quite nice. Plus, long range from a tray covers roughly, what, 20 nine inches on the table so you can get a lot of uh, a lot of effect out of having that on you if we're doing anything like attacking someone from the side or we happen to have jagged trophies on us and really want to make sure that uh, the negative modifiers are impactful and we don't like watch someone roll box cars all the time next up i want to take some other units that are pretty killy that can wipe out ranks easily. So we're reaching for two units of Cave Dweller Savages in this list because they have seven attacks when they go in. They can choose Sundering, Vicious, or um, plus one to hit. So they have the ability to really tailor their, uh, their benefits to what they need. And they also get buffed up by these uh, trophies, I like to call them, really uh, really nicely. Gruesome Reminders isn't the greatest on them. I mean, it, it's not the greatest on anyone, but it's still decent if you want it. But Jagged Trophies has a lot of synergy that comes with uh, the Vicious that's on them, in addition to possibly getting the sides with them because they are quite fast. Uh, Mark of Slaughter is also good if you're trying to increase the amount of uh, dice you're throwing around, and it'll help you trigger uh, First Claim if they happen to be around them. For one of those Cave Dweller Savage units, we are going to t attach uh, Harm of the Dog's Head. Now, we're not bringing the Bannerman with her because I just don't think that it's extremely valuable on the Cave Dweller Savages, although they they do get pretty low on ranks. But when you add that to the unit, you're looking at, looking, you're looking at spending 7 points for this unit, and I think that's just a little bit over the threshold of what you would get out of the Bannerman, especially since he's giving them an ability that they already have access to with Vicious. But the order follow me, uh, once the cave dwellers perform a maneuver or march action before they end up moving, uh, they can have one other friendly unit in short range make a free uh, maneuver after Harma's unit's done their business. And this is just like having a free, not swift, it's not exactly swift advance every turn, but it's definitely getting a free uh reposition every turn or getting you into a better spot where you could get some weird charges that your opponent didn't think you could or just getting units up the table a little further uh, I think that Harma is uh, probably the best one point attachment in the game and in Free Folk it's going to be very difficult for me to not take her in an army with how much getting that free maneuver is uh, is so beneficial to round out the combat units in this army, we're going to bring a pair of Free Folk Raiders, and one of them has a Raid Leader. And Raid Leaders are very straightforward in how we think they function. I think a lot of people end up taking a Raid Leader 
and have the second unit of Free Folk Raiders charge in after they've done that. But what I want to try and utilize the raid leader for is having the raiders go first, of course, use the uh, the raid leader's ability combined assault in order to have one of my more punchy units go next so that the raiders charge in and they probably won't kill a rank because of the their attack stats aren't really uh, anything to write home about. But they do soften that first rank up, and if you can do something like charge with raiders and then attack with uh, the any followers of Bone or Bone Lord's Chosen or even Cave Dwellers, they should knock out that rank by that time, and that'll trigger you to go get some cards with uh, first claim, or you can use the ones that you happen to have in your hand. So the raid leader has a very specific role here, and I wouldn't mind putting a second one on a raider unit, but uh, the points are pretty tight on this one, especially since I am bringing two NCUs with this list. The two NCUs I'm bringing are Styre and Craster. So Styre, I think, is uh, almost essential for any Free Folk list these days. I used to always say Craster was the first one that I grabbed in Free Folk because of his... Uh, flexibility, but I think Styre is probably my number one now, where my lists almost immediately start with Harma Attachment and Styre, the NCU. The reason being, especially for Rattleshirt, is that getting an extra D3 wounds, not even just hits, but straight wounds, allows you to push forward, or push more towards trying to get Rattleshirt's cards to go off, and... Um, we can also soften up a little bit more of an easy unit by influencing our opponent's models in the early turns, mostly just turn one, because turn two you're usually starting engagements with Free Folk. But we get a lot of value out of Styre, and I just don't think you can... It's not that you can't play Free Folk without him, but I would if I see Free Folk lists without Styre, I think that they're just not getting the maximum potential that they could. No other NCU seems to do something for Free Folk as much as Styre does. You're automatically triggering panic checks, and you're definitely getting wounds through. He's just too valuable. For Craster, specifically for this list, I first thought when I played Rattleshirt that I was okay with not having great card advantage in the, in the list because Rattleshirt could just go fetch a uh, first claim or f fetch a, a trophy with fetch or first claim. But I was, in the very first game that I played with him, I had kind of this working assumption that Rattleshirt could go get the trophy and then give it to someone. But then I realized that he's very greedy and only wants it for himself with that first claim ability. So I need to make sure that I can still get some card advantage in this deck. And while playing out a lot of our cards by having the raid leader in there. Like, we're going to be tag-teaming a lot of things, so we can get a lot of things like distraction tactics and group assault to go off. But I also want to make sure that I can have the added benefit of drawing a card with Craster and then getting some of my more uh, rapid decay units, like my followers or my uh, Bone Lords Chosen, to heal up with Craster as well. And I've... There's this... Uh, idea or question out there of can free folk play better with one ncu i think better is a weird word with that i've played not as many games as i'd like to with one ncu but almost every single one that i've played i find myself having to activate my units in ways that i don't really want to because i would like to hold those activations a little bit and there are definitely things on the tactics board that i put a lot of priority on for me, it's often the swords, sometimes the tactics position, and sometimes the maneuver. And even, especially with this army, healing with the coin zone is important in that you can restore a full rank back on something like your your bone your bone guys or the cave dwellers to keep them hanging around a little bit more, especially when it comes to Harma, because I want her to be in the game as long as possible. Towards, like turn four and five it's not so important because she's usually dug into combat but it's still something that I want to take uh, notice of so what ends up happening with one NCU is 
you kind of get forced into going on the thing that's going to be the best for you. And then you operate on this idea that the tactics board is of no use to you whatsoever throughout the rest of the game. And your opponent just kind of gets to run that the run the tactics board when they want to and take what they want to. So at least having one extra NCU, so having two NCUs, I really feel is the the sweet spot for free folk. And as much as I'd want one NCU to work with them, I just feel like you're giving up too much, especially if you're taking someone like Mance, who really wants you to be putting out a lot of condition tokens. Uh, he was a definite consideration for this list, but I really wanted that one raid leader in here to try and double team a unit to get these uh, trophies to go off more. But he is some, if you're not really feeling the raid leader or you don't like playing Harma as much, then I would go for someone like Mance instead of Craster, just so you can get uh, your opponent's units to get worse and uh, and make it so if you're putting out vulnerable, you can uh, do a little bit more work to your opponent and a little more reliably get these uh, attachments to go off. But I really think that Craster and Steyr are good for this list. And that's not to say that there aren't variations on this one you could do. Uh, one of my biggest still pain points is the 8-point unit of the Bone Lords Chosen. With the Fens out now, or not out, but their rules available to us, I have uh, uh, some reservations about taking the Bone Lords Chosen instead taking Fens, which is really strange because with Joffrey we can only take Kingsguard, but why would we want to... Well, no, you don't only have to take Kingsguard with Joffrey, it's just that you can only take them with him. But... There's, I don't think the King's Guard. you'd ever want to not take them with Joffrey. With Eddard's unit, you would never not want to take Eddard's Honor Guard. But with the Bone Lord, or well, with Rattleshirt, I really, it really kind of hurts to be like, the Bone Lord's Chosen sometimes is going to stay on the shelf. Because eight points is a lot to swallow, and I just don't think they bring enough action for eight points in a Free Folk army. So... They have the concentrated attacks, they have a good attack stat line, and their defensive stats are legit, but when you can get Fens for two points less, I'm curious to see if they end up coming in here as the uh, as the preferred unit for him, which is unfortunate, because I, I try not to get down on the followers or the Bone Lords Chosen that much, but it really sparks the conversation of like trying to figure out which one you'd want to take over the other. Whereas with Eddard or Joffrey, it's like 100% these are the units I'm taking, no doubt in my head. But with his character unit, there isn't enough happening with his unit to make me automatically want to pick him up. But that being said, I still think they hitting on threes is beneficial, it's valuable. And the Bone Lore, you can definitely tell in the list build that I've taken Followers of Bone for the other unit instead of Fens. Uh just because I think that they're going to help achieve what he wants more. And uh, some playtesting will tell whether or not that's the that's going to be the case. But this a video was originally supposed to be Tormund, and uh, then I saw the rules for the Fens and needed to take a, pump the brakes on him a little bit and give him some testing with those. But I think Rattleshirt's pretty happy where he's at right now, and if you're having some troubles getting this commander going... I definitely give this list a try and see how it treats you. And remember, unpack raiders into things first to uh, try and try and chain one of the followers of Bone or Bone Lords Chosen to go in next to get that rank to go down. We really got to lean into getting the double activation train happening on these instead of just crashing into units one on one. Thanks for watching the video, and remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you want to find out, or if you want to be notified, I guess, when our new videos come out, because I'm not always so quick on posting links on Facebook, and uh, or when the videos right f or first come out, so having that will at least let you know right away when I uh, get done loading them up to the channel, and stop by our Facebook page and give that a like if you want more uh, updates on what's going on with the channel or uh, a bunch of painting works in progress and I, I'll probably start tapping people for other things they might want to see uh, come out of the channel 
So uh, pay attention there. And otherwise, I, I'm enjoying what Rattleshirt can do. He's not the most versatile commander that we have access to, but he definitely is a force to be reckoned with once you understand what he does and start utilizing those raid leaders and double activations or double engagements to try and not only help him achieve what he wants, but then it also turns on a lot of the cards in the Free Folk deck that people have troubles playing.